In my opinion, the best way to get started in FPV is by spending a decent amount on a good controller and downloading a simulator. This requires the least amount of investment up front, allows you to practice flying to your heart's content without any risks, and once you're a pro at flying in the game, you'll actually be surprised at how much of that muscle memory transfers over to real life. The thing is, I know that that method doesn't work for everyone. Not everybody has a great computer, and others just really prefer to jump into the real thing right away. Which is why today, I want to talk about another option. This here is the Tiny Hawk 3 RTF kit, and RTF stands for Ready to Fly. Ready to Fly kits are great because they're designed for beginners, and they come with everything you need to get started in one easy package. This kit in particular comes with all your main components, like your goggles, controller, and the drone. You also get some goggle antennas, a battery, battery charger, spare propellers, spare screws, tools, a USB cable, and a few little extras. Now, other than maybe wanting a few spare batteries, this is everything you're gonna need to get out and get flying. The best part about it is, in a kit like this, all the components come set up and ready to go as well. All you have to do is charge everything up, turn everything on, plug in the drone battery, and you're ready for your first flight. And this is all really convenient, but to be honest, I was never really sold on most of these beginner kits, because I feel like they always come with the same few problems. With the Tiny Hawk 3 though, I gotta admit that Emacs is doing some really cool stuff to address some of these issues, so I wanna talk about that. The first problem for me are that micro drones are usually harder to fly than a standard sized drone like this one. Because of their weight, distance between the motors, and added power, bigger drones like this are usually more stable in the air and will also be less affected by wind. When I first tried the Tiny Hawk 3, my first impression was that it felt significantly underpowered compared to the other tiny quads I own. But the more I used it, the more I realized how intentional this actually is. First of all, because it's less powerful, it's way easier to maintain a constant elevation, which can be one of the hardest things for beginners to learn. My dad is currently learning how to fly, and this is something he usually struggles with. But when I let him try the Tiny Hawk, I was surprised that he was actually able to control it fairly well. Now, two other things that helped were putting the quad in angle mode, which will level it the drone automatically, and the Tiny Hawk also comes set up with a lower controller sensitivity, or rates, which make it easier to control as well. The tune on the Tiny Hawk 3 is also great and I could perform inverted maneuvers with minimal prop wash. I'm not sure how this compares to the Tiny Hawk 2, but I can definitely say that this is a huge improvement from my old Tiny Hawk S. Overall, the more I used it, the more I started to love it. And I would definitely say that a beginner would have a much easier time learning on the Tiny Hawk than they would on, let's say, the Mobula 6, which is still my favorite tiny whoop. The next issue that comes up is quality. A professional FPV setup can cost hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. So to get a kit like this down to a reasonable price, you kind of have to cut corners somewhere. Because of that, these kits will often use cheap materials and can be very limited, forcing you to quickly upgrade as you advance through the hobby. The Tiny Hawk kit is no different and definitely feels more like a toy than a professional product, but compared to their previous kits, Emacs has made some pretty big improvements with this one. First of all, the controller in this kit is much more usable than the one that comes with the Tiny Hawk 1 and 2. It's bigger and feels very comfortable in my hands. The gimbals or control sticks are very basic and I wouldn't expect much, but for a super budget radio like this, I actually really enjoyed using them and controlling the drone was not a problem. Although I haven't tried, apparently it's also possible to use this controller with other drones as well, as long as they have an FR Sky receiver in them. Uh, I can confirm though that I was able to hook it up to a computer and use it with a simulator without a problem. Moving on to the goggles in this kit, these are actually really cool. They extend to three different distances to provide a more comfortable viewing experience, and the design also makes them much more portable when they're folded in. The field of view is also pretty large, which I really like. And for me, I'd say they're comfortable enough to wear. I will say though that out of all the pieces in this kit, the goggles definitely feel the most flimsy and cheap, and they're probably the first piece that I would want to replace. What's really cool though, is that Emacs actually acknowledges that. And a useful feature that they added is that the screen can actually be removed. And while the body of the goggles feels cheap, 
the screen part feels pretty durable. And that's cool because if you upgrade to a better set of goggles, you can still keep this part and use it as an external monitor for your friends or family to watch along. Not only that, but for those of you who wear glasses and can't wear the goggles, Emacs also includes this little attachment that can be screwed into the controller and allows you to mount the monitor to it instead. Now you have more of a traditional drone setup. I honestly love this idea and I think it adds a lot of value to the kit. Okay, so there's actually one more thing that I noticed only after filming this review, but I think it has to be mentioned. So you might have seen in my previous flight footage that overall the image looked pretty clear. You might have seen a little bit of breakup from time to time, but this is perfectly normal no matter what type of goggles you have. The thing is, I didn't actually record those clips with these goggles, but I used a different pair. And the reason for that is because originally when I was testing these out, I didn't realize that one of their weak points is video recording. And although you can record your flights with these, for some reason, every little crackle that you see during your flight ends up recording as this giant flash on the screen that pretty much makes the video completely unwatchable. So anyways, uh, the rest of the clips in this video are gonna be from the Emacs goggles, so you will see what I mean. I apologize in advance, they're pretty terrible. But again, this is not what you're gonna see while you're flying. But anyways, in my opinion, the best part about this kit is the Tiny Hawk itself. It's also plastic, but in this case, because it's so light and small, I actually think that's a good thing. Uh, it doesn't seem to impact its flight performance too much, but if you were to crash, the soft plastic would help dampen that impact. Out of all the gear you get, I'd say that these two things are probably what you're gonna end up using the longest. So it's nice to see that Emacs tried to make these a little bit more durable so that they at least last you longer. Now, the next limitation that these kits often have is range. And you definitely can't expect to be doing any long distance flying with this kind of setup. You have to keep in mind that this is a budget kit with budget components, and it's not really upgradable in any way. That being said, for just flying the Tiny Hawk around, I didn't feel limited by its range whatsoever. I tested it in the house and was able to fly from the second story all the way down to the basement with pretty clear video the entire time and without losing connection. I also took it out to the park and in this open area, I was able to go the length of the baseball diamond without a problem. I didn't want to test it further because there were some people with their dogs and I was a bit worried that I might lose connection and one of the dogs might come and pick up my drone. I wouldn't bet on flying it much further than that though, but with a tiny whoop like this, for most uses, there's really no reason to. Finally, even though micro drones like this can be beat around quite a lot, they're definitely not invincible and will eventually break in a hard crash. What sucks about that is because they're so small, the components on the inside are tiny as well, and they're usually also more crammed together, which makes them a lot harder to fix. To help with this, it's nice to see that Emacs finally made the top canopy of the Tiny Hawk removable, which makes it much easier to access the electronics. If you're someone who's intimidated by soldering as well, you're also in luck because you'll notice that the motors simply plug in, which makes replacing them very easy. Again, you probably won't be repairing this quad very often, but when the time comes, these little things will make a difference. Overall, honestly, I think Emacs did a really good job with this kit. Especially after letting my dad try it, I was genuinely surprised at how well it worked for him. So if you are someone that prefers a more hands-on product, I definitely think that this could be a decent option for you. Especially if you're someone with a casual interest in FPV and you just want to fly around the house and have some fun, this kit could actually last you a pretty long time. But if you know that your goal is to get into freestyle or cinematic FPV, just keep in mind that you probably will end up upgrading most of this gear fairly quickly. Now, if there was one final thing that I would say that Emacs could further improve on, I would say customer experience. Now, although you get this QR code that you can scan to get a full user manual, most of the things in that manual will not make any sense or be useful to a beginner. And I say this all the time, but just including some basic instructions like how to arm the drone, what channel the drone is set to, and how to use all the equipment, um, at least like a basic explanation, would really help. And even something as simple as adding stickers to all the switches on the controller just to label them 
could significantly help with a lot of those frustrations that beginners face. This is something that seems to be the norm with a lot of FPV companies though. And I do see that it's very, very slowly changing, but I'm hoping that if I keep complaining about it, maybe it'll change a little bit faster. Anyways, that's all I got for today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I appreciate all of you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.